there's a lot of different ways that we can talk about being in a toxic relationship and all the different signs of different abuse, all the different levels and all the different aspects. Today, I'm going to talk to you about simply just five. Like, what are five different signs that you might be in a toxic relationship and you might be stuck with a toxic person? Now, two things I need you to note really quick. Number one, over here, uh, when we're talking about this, I need you to understand the label doesn't actually matter. Too many of you are focused on, is he a narcissist or is he not a narcissist? That's why I'm going to refer in this in this video of it just being toxic. Because the end of the day, if you're with a toxic, abusive person, it doesn't matter if he has the label and he's still beating you. It just matters that he's beating you. And some of you need to wake up to that reality because you're looking for a label to justify you leaving when in reality you need to leave because of the abuse that you're currently under. Uh, the second thing is, if you're new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a former narcissist that has shown up in a way that's been extremely abusive, mentally, emotionally, gaslighting, cheating, all of the different things that have made up narcissism in my life. Those are the things that I've been working on growing and transforming. A lot of growth, a lot of development, a lot of therapy, a lot of self-work, a lot of things that have been happening in my life to bring me to the point that that's not who I am. That's not how I show up. But as a result, it also lets me give you the cheat codes on this is what's going on inside of your relationship. So let's dive in today and see what's going on. When we talk through this piece of being in a toxic relationship, when we talk through what is actually happening, I want you to consider there's five different things that I'm going to highlight today that might be signs that you're in a toxic relationship. Number one, when we start off this conversation is simply the fact that you feel crazy. Now, you might not feel like you're certified being insane and that you need to check yourself into a place, but simply the fact that you keep bringing up the same topic, the same issue, the same problem over and over and over again, and nothing changes. Nothing's gotten better. Nothing's fixed it. And in fact, you see these conversations happen and you realize there's even circular conversations and circular reasoning that's going on. You find yourself coming to a certain topic and then repeating this topic and then thinking that you resolve something and then repeating the topic because no resolution actually happens. Narcissists love to be able to just continue having the conversation go and go and go and go. It's like the Energizer Bunny. It never finishes. It never stops until they want it to stop and then they're like, I'm out. Forget it. Commercial's done. Energizer Bunny's gone. Let's move on. And so you'll feel crazy. Now, some of the reasons why you'll feel crazy in a toxic relationship is because you're continuing to try different things and you keep getting the same result, right? Like the definition of insanity is trying the same thing. <coughs> there we go. Thank you. Uh, it's trying the same thing over and over and over and getting the same result, right? That's the definition of crazy. And you'd think that that would make sense here, but when you're in a toxic relationship, you're trying anything and everything. You're trying different therapists, you're trying different counseling, you're trying different modalities, you're trying to communicate differently, you're trying to do what he wants, trying to do what you want. There's so many different things that you're modifying, adjusting you for to try to make the relationship work and nothing changes. So you start to actually get a little crazy. You might feel a little crazy because of the reactive abuse. He just keeps pushing and pressing your buttons over and over and over until you react and respond in a way that's not naturally you. You're not normally the one to scream, to yell, to push back, to throw things, but then you feel crazy. This just might be one of the signs that you're in a toxic relationship because when you look back at all the other relationships, it hasn't been this way. I was, I was talking to a, a client or someone who's coming on and one of the things that we were going back, for, back and forth with early on was this piece of like, she's maybe it's me. And I asked her, I was like, wait a second, how long have you been with this guy? And second of all, all the other relationships before this, did you show up this way? And she was like, well, no, I haven't. Like we've been together for like 10 plus years, but the relationship before, like they were great. We still keep in contact. Like it's a good relationship. And I was like, exactly. And that's one of the reasons why you need to, to recognize he's making you feel crazy. He's making you feel extremely crazy in the relationship. So maybe you just feel crazy. Maybe you just feel weird. Maybe you just feel insane sometimes of why isn't this actually progressing? What's actually going on? Now, the second thing that I want to bring up is you might not just feel crazy. It might just simply be this place of being confused. You don't know what's right, what's wrong, what's up, what's down. There's no status in the relationship that's definitive so that you know that you even have a relationship. It might be in one moment you're in a relationship and the next moment you're broken up. It might be one moment he says, I'm packing up and I'm moving out. And the next moment he's staying and he's asking you to be begging you never to leave him. 
and it oscillates back and forth. This produces intermittent reinforcement, the highs of it being really good and the lows of it being really bad. The problem is as you do this long enough, you start to sell yourself on, well, this is just how life is. This is just must be a relationship. It's just because he's emotionally immature. You'll make up a ton of excuses and not just realize you're being abused. Like this is not a healthy dynamic of the ups and downs that are just keeping you stuck. Oftentimes this is where we'll see the trauma bonds start to be born, the addiction to this person start to be fostered, and it gets you to the place that you don't know how to leave simply because you're confused and I don't know what to do. When in reality, there's a lot of times that you do know what to do, but your head might know what to do, but your heart is not following. And when this happens, it produces a cognitive distance that leaves you in a limbo land. And the limbo land makes you think, do I go left or do I go right? I don't know. I'll wait here till I figure it out. That's what he wants. Because as you wait for the next five 10, 20, 35 years, he'll continue to use and, and manipulate you as much as he wants, simply because when you are confused, you don't make a move. When you don't move, the version of you dies, disintegrates, disappears, and you become drained and emotionally desolate. So we've got, we've got crazy, we've got confused. And another piece is you simply being stuck. This is the third one, by the way, of you simply being stuck in the chaos like the, the manipulative, chaotic environment that's happening, and you're simply just stuck there. Uh, oftentimes, I'll liken a narcissist in your life, the toxic person in your life, being like a tornado, right? That just comes through and seems to just wreck everything. Wrecks relationships, wrecks communication, destroys like your fun, like doesn't let you hang out with people. Like anything and everything, it seems like if he's around, it just, it goes bad. Like the vacation you planned that you thought was going to be the greatest and then he went on vacation with you and you realized it wasn't the greatest because he manipulated and communicated. Like all the things that happened that made it all about him and actually destroyed so much of the time. Like you weren't able to have fun. You weren't able to actually engage. It just was an awful vacation, right? This is the chaos that we're talking about. And people will stay in the chaos for such a long period of time because they're stuck thinking, well, I don't know what life will be like if I leave him. I don't know if I can live without him. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if I'm smart enough because he always tells me I'm dumb. Like there's so many layers to this, but if you're not careful, you stay stuck in the chaos thinking, well, at least it's better than not knowing. And better than not knowing, many people will just stay in a relationship simply because they're afraid of the unknown. If this is as chaotic as it is inside the relationship, I would imagine it'd be worse outside the relationship. So I'm not going to make a move. And as a result, they stay completely stuck, oftentimes forever. So that's the first three. The fourth one, I want you to consider this piece of just being concerned. And what I mean with this is we're kind of layering these together, but there being this concern there that's not this healthy concern for the other person, but this almost like overbearing, over-controlling concern of like being concerned about him and being concerned about what's happening. Sometimes we'll refer to this even into like the fear piece of you being afraid of where he's going, what he's doing. And there's a level of this that can end up even being trying to control. And when we talk through this, oftentimes we'll look at a piece where like, for instance, my wife, she would get to a place where she would go through my phone every single night. She would want to know every single thing that happened. She wanted to know where I went. And over a period of time, this just produced more stress and anxiety for her. And she got to a place where she had to realize, hey, he's either going to cheat on you with you, like he already has, or he's going to cheat on you without you. And either way, like you can't control it. He's the only one that can make that decision. So you have to let go of a piece, not your responsibility of you and your growth and not your safety and not your protection, but you have to let go of a piece of concern. Doesn't mean that he just gets to do whatever he's going to do, but it means you have to focus on you and your growth. Otherwise, you'll be so concerned about him, you forget about you. How many of you have forgot about you in the toxic relationship? You're like, yeah, I don't really have self-care, don't really have a relationship with God. I've been struggling with all these different directions and ways and things that have been happening. Your business has suffered, your emotional state has suffered. Like all of these things have gone on simply because you've been so concerned about him, you haven't been concerned about you. He'll make sure the focus is all on him and that's all you get to do. You don't get to focus on anything else, just on him. That's what we're talking about. The concern is so high and put on him. The last thing I'd mention inside of here, so number five would be cornered. You feel trapped. 
You feel like you can't actually get out of the relationship because you're afraid of the unknown, like we talked about earlier, or there's this piece of being stuck inside of your own thoughts, beliefs, and stories. Now, for instance, one of those could easily be inside of religion or Christianity. You can't leave because divorce is wrong. Therefore, you should stay with an abusive person that's going to continue to manipulate and abuse you over and over and over again. This is one of the ways that you feel cornered. This is how the church has produced not just a lot of narcissists, but a lot of marriages that are continually getting abused over and over because they'd rather turn a blind eye to the abuse than they would actually help the women be liberated from the toxic guy who keeps doing the abusive behaviors over and over and over again. So it's simply there's this feeling of being trapped, of being cornered, of being imprisoned by the toxic guy. And so I want you to consider today, which out of these five do you actually resonate with? If you resonate with one of them, I want you to type it down below in the comments. So if you feel crazy, just type in the word crazy. If you resonate with all five, I want you to literally type out all five. Maybe you're in the place where you're just feeling crazy. Maybe it's where you're feeling confused. Maybe you're at a place where you're stuck in the chaos. Maybe you're feeling concerned about him so much you can't be concerned about you. And maybe you just feel cornered. You simply just feel trapped inside the relationship. If any of these resonate, Type them down below because I need you to actually see and realize and declare to yourself that this stuff is affecting you. If you don't start to take that initial step of awareness, you oftentimes will stay stuck way too long because you're unwilling to actually see it. My job is for you to not just see it, but then do something about it. Right now, if you see it, the thing you're going to do right now is you're going to type in the chat one, 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 two, three, four, or five or all of them of what actually resonated with you today. 